This tutorial will show you how to make a latex mask from scratch, from beginning to end. The process will include making a two-part plaster mold of your head, making a clay copy of your head for sculpting the mask design, molding the sculpt in plaster, cleaning out the mold, casting liquid latex in the mold, and pulling out and finishing the final mask. Start out by setting up in the bathroom facing a large mirror. Step one, take off your shirt and do a sexy dance. This is the most important part of the process, so feel free to take as much time as you need. Start out by wetting your hair and combing it so that it sticks close to your head. We're going to start out by making a poor man's bald cap. Pull out a piece of plastic wrap about a foot and a half long and lay it lengthwise against your head, covering your front hairline. Add pieces of duct tape to stick it to your face. Very attractive. Pull out another piece of plastic wrap and wrap that one around the back side of your head, covering the bottom of your hair. Tape it up. Your hair should now be completely covered. Take some Vaseline and rub it all over your face and neck, and any exposed skin or hair on your head. This will prevent the plaster from sticking to you. Dip plaster strips in a bucket of water and lay them on your face. Repeat until the front half of your head is totally covered. Lay the strips all the way up to the middle top of your head, all the way down the sides, and a little on the neck. You can cover up one eye, but leave the other one uncovered so you can see what you're doing, and keep holes around your nostrils so you can still breathe. After you have your face covered, you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but it needs to be dry enough so that it will hold its shape when you take it off your head. Try to keep a good posture, standing up straight while the plaster is drying. Five to ten minutes with the hair dryer should be enough. When the plaster is dry, pull the mold off of your head. It should come off easily. The bald cap will probably come with it. That's fine. If you need to, reapply another plastic wrap bald cap and repeat the same process covering the back of your head. It's a good idea to have some overlap in the middle to ensure that both mold halves will cover all of your head. Dry the plaster and then pull the mold off. To make a clean division between the two halves, put both of the molds on your head until one overlaps the other. On mine, the back one overlapped the front one by about a half an inch. Use a permanent marker to mark the edge of the overlap. You can then take off that half of the mold and then cut it with scissors right along the line that you drew. The two halves should now join together smoothly at the dividing line. Add more plaster strips to seal up the nostril holes and the eye hole. It's also a good idea to add another layer or two of more strips for extra strength. Now we're getting ready to put clay into our molds, which we will then form around a foam head. We're going to cut the foam head into pieces and then tape it back together. Having the foam head in pieces will make it easier to remove when we're pulling it out of the plaster mold that we will be making over the final mask sculpt. I cut the head with a long serrated knife, a bread knife. This was very messy. Little pieces of foam stick everywhere. Do this over a tarp or somewhere where it's easy to clean up. Prepare your molds by laying down some plastic wrap into the insides. Then take large pieces of clay and press them down into the molds. Push them all the way with a lot of pressure to ensure that you're filling all the details of the molds. There are many types of clay you can use. I am using pottery clay mostly because it was cheap. It's not the best for sculpting, probably a bit too wet and soft. Oil-based clay is much better for sculpting, but it is more expensive. Something that might be good to do is first lay in a small layer of oil-based clay or any other high quality clay on the surface of the mold and then fill the rest with the cheaper clay. Fill in the molds completely with about three quarters of an inch of clay. Then put the foam head into one of the molds, position it properly centered, and press it in. You'll have to add and remove some clay in some areas to get it to fit perfectly. Do your best to make sure that the clay completely fills all of the empty space between the foam head and the plaster molds. If you have a hollow space in between there, your clay might collapse when you start sculpting with it. Once the clay is in the mold, press tightly against the foam head Put the other mold on the other side and squeeze it tightly until the plaster mold edges line up. You can then pull the plaster molds off. 
the plastic wrap will stick to the clay, just peel it off. Add more clay to fill the seam where the two halves meet together and smooth everything out, and you should then have a clay copy of your head ready for sculpting. My design is a Batman mask based off of the Dark Knight. My advice for sculpting would be to find YouTube videos of other people sculpting and try to use the tools and techniques that they use. Once you have your final sculpt, spray it with a clear spray paint or a lacquer. This will seal the clay and make it much easier to remove from the plaster mold. Wait for this to dry before proceeding. Mix some plaster with water to a thin consistency and brush some of this onto the sculpt, making sure that you completely cover small details like ridges and wrinkles. This is called a beauty coat. We cover these small details first to make sure that they will be properly transferred to the plaster mold. After this first coat, you can then mix a batch of thicker plaster and then spread it all over the mold. I just use my hands. You'll want at least a half an inch of plaster covering the whole sculpt on the first layer. Tap the head a bit to get some of the air bubbles out of the plaster. Now I'm using plaster of Paris because it's easy to find and it's pretty cheap, but it can be a little soft and not too durable for detailed molding work like this. There are stronger plasters out there like Hydrocal or Ultracal, which are much better for this process. You can buy those from online stores. And if you can afford the cost, try to go for these higher quality plasters. To build up the mold, I used alternating layers of plaster and plaster strips. I lay on a layer of plaster and then add a layer or two of plaster strips. This is a good way to add durability and strength to your mold. You can also use burlap straps. Add more plaster, then more strips. More plaster and more strips. I did this until the mold was about an inch thick. Then I let it dry for at least a few hours. After the mold is dry, we need to empty it out. Start by removing the styrofoam head. If you cut it into pieces, then this will be very easy. Then dig out the clay. Most of it should come out in just one piece. Some pieces of clay will be left behind. Sponges, sandpaper, or a wet toothbrush can help a lot with this. A small piece of bent wire can also help to dig into small cavities. Just be careful to not scratch the plaster surface too much. Go ahead and smooth out imperfections in the mold. You can use sandpaper to sand down areas that aren't smooth enough, and you can fill in holes or damaged areas with more plaster or joint compound. Try and clean out as many tiny plaster and clay pieces from the mold as you can. I took the mold outside and sprayed it with the garden hose, and then wiped the insides gently with a towel. I also sprayed it with a clear lacquer to seal and hopefully smooth the inside more. For working with latex, set up in a well-ventilated area, like a garage or somewhere outside. A respirator is highly recommended. Have your latex in a container ready to pour. If you want latex of a specific color, mix in some acrylic paint. Thin the latex down with a little bit of water, about a tablespoon or two of water per cup of latex. This allows the latex to more easily seep into small details and will give you a thinner, more even layer that will dry faster. Pour a good amount of latex into the mold. Swish it around to get all of the inside surface coated. Then hold the mold upside down to drain out most of the excess. Set the mold on the ground under some newspaper with the hole facing down. This will help the latex drain out even more. Rotate the mold every couple of minutes so that the runoff will drain at the back and the front and both of the sides of the mold. This will help to prevent latex from pooling up anywhere in the mold. After all the excess latex is drained, set the mold down with the hole facing up and let the latex dry completely. A hairdryer on the lowest heat setting aimed inside of the mold a foot or two away will speed up the process. With a hairdryer, it should only take about an hour to an hour and a half for the layer to dry. Once it's dry, pour in more latex and repeat the process. Do this for about four or five layers. After all the latex is dry, you're ready for the most fun part of the process. Sprinkle some baby powder onto the latex. Baby powder prevents latex from sticking to itself. Peel the latex away at the edges of the mold and slowly pull it away from the plaster. 
Be gentle with it, don't pull too hard. Add more baby powder to the top side of the latex as you peel it off. Eventually you'll have it all pulled out and you will have a mask. A very dirty, ugly mask. You'll want to clean off debris and smooth out some areas. You can wipe off the mask with a wet towel. You can add more latex to fill in small holes. You can also use a Dremel tool to help sand off unwanted raised areas. The easiest way to paint a latex mask is to use latex mixed with acrylic paint. For my mask, I sprayed thin latex through a cheap airbrush to get a thin top layer. This worked very well to cover all the imperfections and debris and also helped to smooth out the surface. It was very difficult to try to get the surface perfectly smooth. As you can see, mine still has quite a few lumps and holes. Use scissors or an X-Acto knife to cut out mouth holes and eye holes. And then you should have a finished product, a custom homemade latex mask that fits your head like a glove.